This location barely needs any introduction at all. Of course, it's Times Square. It's featured in so many major Hollywood movies. It also reminds me very much, of course, of the cityscape that Ridley Scott created in Blade Runner. Who would have known, obviously he did, that 10, 20 years later we would be having these visual billboards as we do. All we're missing are the dirigible billboards floating above us. And it's the perfect location for me to talk about branding and marketing. My name is John Perkis and this is Diary of a Failed Actor. Only I'm not John Perkis. Today's vlog on branding and marketing that is so much to fit in uh, is such a big subject that this is another episode that's going to be broken into two parts. I've changed my name several times for various reasons. First of all, when I came out of drama school, my uh, well, just before I did, my principal said, maybe you should have just John Lyne or John Perkis. John Lyne Perkis is a bit of a mouthful. And I was coming out of drama school, I was young, I was stuff that. It's my name. I want to be who I am. John Lyne Perkis. And then what happened, of course, I had been experiencing this. No one can pronounce my name correctly. It's John Lynn Perkis. It's John Lynn Perkis. It's John Lynn Perkis. It's John Lyne Perkins. So, at the same time, Dan Day-Lewis had come out the year before me. He had come out of Bristol Old Vic, he graduated. So there was a guy with a double-barreled name who wasn't having a problem. And then I saw him doing uh, My Beautiful Laundrette, where Dan immersed himself in being a South London Cockney geezer, talking like that. And I, I thought, you know, I really, I really want to take on these roles. And I felt that my name, the line double barreled Perkis name, was just giving me the roles of the aristocrat, the upper class, hooray, uh, Henry, champagne clinking, chinless wonder idiot. <laughs> so uh, I decided to change my name to my then wife's name of Duval, John Duval. Actually, that was a great name. But this is the interesting thing. When I was John Lyne Perkis, I was playing IRA bombers, East End Victorian murderers, and as soon as I changed my name to John Duval, I was in House of Cards, House of Elliot, Jeeves and Worcester. <laughs> Everything I've been trying to avoid. Now, my classics teacher at drama school said a very wise thing to me. You get typecast, that's not a bad thing. You're working. Go with it. Of course you can immerse yourself in a character and you can lose who you are. That's the whole point of acting. So as you can see, I was in a confusion here. So I've gone from John Lyne Perkis to John Duval. Now I wasn't only getting confused here. So were the casting directors. So were the agents. What's going on? What's with changing your name? So I decided to change my name back to John Lyne Perkis. Uh, actually to Johnny Lyne Perkis. So I'd been John Lyne Perkis, John Duval. Now I was Johnny Lyne Perkis. You see where this is going? This is not a good move. Some people are wondering, well, why are you changing your name? What are you trying to hide? What are you running away from? Well, it could be low self-esteem a lot of self-doubt, uh, trying to find reasons why the work isn't coming in as much as you would like it to be coming in. Those are all the wrong reasons to be changing your name and the reasons I was changing my name. When I came to America, I changed it again to Johnny Duval. Who knew me out here? Nobody. Um, and then I went to an image consultant, a guy actually who was a very successful agent, Paul Dudridge, in London, moved over to Hollywood, changed his career, and I met with him. And he said, it's very strange, I'm looking at your showreel, and your showreel says everything that I want to see about you and, and know about you. It, it's you, it's real. But the person sitting in front of me is not. Generally, it's the other way around. And this was also because of the way I was dressed at the time. Very British. I had a waistcoat, tweed jacket. Uh, I had a, this is a fedora, I used to wear a trilby. So I was very much the epitome of being British. He said, why do you feel you have to do that? Why do you feel you have to be that? What are you hiding behind? I suggest John Perkis. It's much stronger. 
Well, hell, I'd just gone around in a complete circle because that's where I was when I came out of drama school with my principal saying, you need to change your name to John Perkins. It's very rare that an actor has to change their name. Morris Micklewhite comes to mind. He, of course, is Michael Caine. John Wayne's first name was Marilyn. Not a very good first name for an actor who's playing cowboys. So obviously, John Wayne stuck. So, branding and marketing goes beyond that. And I've already touched on the fact of an image consultant. Well, he was, he was helping me change as much of my, not my outer image so much, it was my inner image he was looking at. So what we want to look at is your personal image, uh, your look, your appearance. Uh, your physical appearance, of course, is very important. When you walk into a room, you want to make an impact. Uh, and that's whether you're just sitting down and having a meeting with a, a casting director or director, or whether you're going in for a specific role. I was really fortunate to have met Rachel Moss of Rachel Moss Style Consulting and she completely re-imaged me. She taught me so much. I'm colorblind. I hate shopping. I hate buying clothes. I loathe it. So I, I look, God knows what I look like. She really worked with my skin color, my hair color, my eye coloring. Uh, she worked on the style of the cut of the clothing that we were purchasing. And I tell you now, that was the best money I have ever invested. It changed everything. I, for a start, became a much more confident individual purely by the way I was dressed. I was happy with what I was wearing. I was aware that what I was wearing was sharp. It looked cool. And I got comments when I walked into the casting room. People were really taken with what I was wearing. Keeping yourself mentally and physically fit, that is incredibly important. Now, I'm not in any way stressing here diets or crazy regimes, but there's a lot of pressure and a lot of stress put on you as an actor, physically and mentally, both in front of the camera and if you're on stage. You've got to have stamina. You've got to have body strength as well. Uh, I'm very fortunate here living in New York, I get an opportunity to walk everywhere, something I couldn't do in Los Angeles. Choose a style that is true to you, not totally driven by the marketplace. Branding also has entered into the name that we chose for this vlog, Diary of a Failed Actor. We've had a lot of comments actually about it, a lot of positive comments about it, but one or two saying, well, isn't this giving off uh, a negative uh, image? Uh, a negative message by using that in the title. I wanted it to stand out. I could have called it Diary of a Performing Actor or Diary of a Successful Actor. Now, is that going to grab the eye as much as Diary of a Failed Actor? It's got a curiosity value to it. And I believe there isn't such a thing as failure. Failures are all little successes leading to greater successes. The only way you gain and grow and prosper in anything, not just as an actor, is from our failures from our mistakes. We learn by them and we move forward. I'd love to hear if you have any comments to make on that. I'd love to hear from you on that. My name is John Perkis and this is Diary of a Failed Actor.